Okay. Um, yeah, welcome everyone. Um, it's great to have uh, Sohelia Pekbash. Uh, we'll talk about, um, or oh, from um, Imperial College, we'll talk about moduli spaces of stable objects on the Kuznetso component of cubic threefolds. Please. Okay, thanks all for the invitation. Uh, it's my pleasure to give a talk in Zach's and yours. So I'm going to talk about moduli space of the stable objects on, um, on a special triangulated category corresponding to the uh, drive category of coherent shapes on a cubic trifold. So I will uh, explain in full details what I mean by the coherence of component of the cubic trifold and which kind of moduli space we want to consider on it. So first of all, uh, my talk is based on two work. Um, first one is with Laura Pertusi, and the second one uh, is a group project with Aaron Bayer, Shared Vintages, Georg Hain, Toledo Martini, Fatima Rezoi, and uh, Benjamin Schmidt. I'm going to first um, briefly explain what is bridge line stability conditions on a triangulated categories. And then I'm defining what are ser invariant stability conditions. Um, so I will study ser invariant stability conditions on particular types of triangulated categories and give a general criteria, uh, which ensures that there exists a unique ser invariant stability conditions on, um, on specific triangulated categories up to GL2 action. As an example, we will look at this residual category or Kuznetsov category of a cubic default um, and see that um, there, there exists actually a unique survey in stability conditions on, on this Kuznetsov component of the GL2 action. And then I will look at, at uh, two applications of this result. The first one is uh, reproving categorical theory theorems on cubic tables, which I will explain in full details what I mean by that. And the second application is, is to study marginalized space of all rich bundles on cubic tables uh, of rank uh, bigger than two. Uh, okay, so let me start with the notion of bridge line subject condition. So, uh, a bridge line stability conditions, roughly, so the definition here that I gave is just a pre-stability condition. So the, the main definition is slightly complicated, more complicated, but uh, uh, for today's talk, we only need this, this definition of stability conditions on a triangulated category, which is just basically a pair of A and Z, where A is the heart of a bounded tier structure that you can think of it as an abelian subcategory of uh, our triangulated category T. And Z is a group morphism from K group of A to a complex number, such that for any non-zero element in our heart A, we know that the image of Z of E is in the upper half plane or negative real line. So it can be written as R exponential I pi of phi of E for R bigger than zero and phi of E between zero and one. So since uh, for any object, we know phase, any object in this abelian category A, we know that the phase varies between zero and one, we can have a well-defined notion of stability for this object. So we say that an object E in our Abelian category A is semi-stable with respect to our pair A and Z. If for any non-trivial sub-object in this part, in this Abelian category, we have phase of F is small than uh, equal in case of semi-stability than phase of E. Okay, so this is uh, this is just the analogous uh, kind of condition that uh, we have for the class class real stability for vector bundles on curves. So when we look at just uh, vector bundles on curves, we just look at the category of coherent sheaf on curves, and uh, the the slow function uh, was just the degree over phase, so degree over rank. And instead of the slope, we just have the phase. So it just gives the ordering, uh, well defined ordering for our object. So the kind of uh, the way that we think of them is exactly the same as the classical notion of a subway. And we also require that this space satisfy the hardened Heisman property, which means that for any object in the heart A, there exists a finite filtration to semi-stable objects of decreasing slope. Okay. So 
Uh, we can think of a stability condition, uh, A and Z, this pair of A and Z, in a slightly different way. Because corresponding to this pair, we can define a slicing P of D, which is just a collection of full additive subcategories P5 for any real number phi. Uh, it's, it is defined as false. If phi is between zero and one, then we define the subcategory P5 to be just the zero object. We consist of the zero object and all sigma semi-stable object of phase phi. And uh, if we have phi, if we consider phi plus n, when phi is between zero and one and n in integer, we define P of phi plus n to be shift by n of all objects in P of phi. Okay. So the claim is that out of this slicing, we can actually recover our heart A because our heart is just the uh, it's just the uh, subcategory, uh, which is just the extension closure of this P of phi, where phi is between zero and one. Okay, that's why uh, from now on, I'm going to uh, use both these notations, A and Z, or P and Z, to just give a stability condition, because they basically carry the same information. Okay, so as I said, the, if we have the slicing, then we can recover A as just the extension closure of all semi-stable objects uh, of phase between zero. Okay, so um, Bruchelin himself proved that the space of stability conditions on a fixed triangulated category is a complex manifold, and I'm going to denote it by stab T. Uh, he showed that the space of stability condition carries a right action of the universal cover of uh, GL2R. So in, uh, we know that any element in this universal cover can, uh, can, can be just written as a pair of M and G, where M is just a orientation preserving linear isomorphism of R2 to R2, and G from R to R is an increasing function such that we know that G of phi plus one is equal to G of phi plus uh, one. And um, we, we want the compatibility of M and G such that they give the same function on this one, okay? So for any element, which is any element in this universal color, we define the right action of this GT law to the stability condition in sigma to be a new stability condition, P prime sigma prime, such that P prime of phi for any real number phi is, um, is just a P of G of phi. And uh, we need to change the stability condition so, uh, so, uh, so that to be compatible with, with the new slicing. So we define the time to be composition of Z with M inverse. So as you see, when we act um, and any, uh, for any stability condition, when we act it by G tilde, then the space of, a sub, uh, the space of semi stable object of um, each phase is, is not basically changing. And by, we are just relabeling the stable factors. So uh, the stable object and relabeling the face of the stable object. So, so in terms of the, uh, you know, in terms of studying the moduli space of a stable object with respect to sigma uh, after action by GL2, then we are, uh, then the moduli space of a stable object is not basically changing. So we basically have the same stability condition. But we also have a left action by the group of linear exact autoequivalence of this uh, our triangulated category T, which is uh, defined as follows. So for any phi um, in this uh, linear exact autoequivalence group, we define phi that sigma to be again new stability condition for P prime. The P prime of phi for any real uh, number phi is defined as phi of P of phi. Okay. And, um, and we have to again change the central charge, so, uh, change the stability function to be compatible with P prime. So we look at phi, uh, phi star, which is um, the induced um, uh, isomorphism of the K group of T. Uh, and we look at its inverse and compose it with C. And the claim is that it's compatible with the new slicing P prime. 
Okay, so we have these two actions on the space of stability conditions, and using these two actions, we can define what are their environment stability conditions. So assume our triangulated category T has a stair functor, which I'm going to denote it by ST. And we know that ST is a linear exact autoplay balance of T. So we can define that the stability condition sigma on T is zero invariant if when we act, sigma, if ST dot sigma is equal to sigma times G prime, where for, for some G prime, for some G tilde in, in the universal cover of the G tilde. So it just basically means that um, if our stability condition is zero invariant, then and, uh, I start with a stable object, then after acting by, by the stair functor, my object remains uh, stable. Okay, and uh, the face of that my ob all objects uh, will be uniformly changed so that we can find a, a, an element in GL2 action which gives the same action on uh, this stability condition. Okay, so the simplest example that you can think of it is when we have a kind of a clavial category and the stair functor is trivial. Uh, I mean, the stair functor is a shift. Then, then of course, any stability condition will be a uh, certain variant. Okay, let's, uh, uh, let's just look at very special case of um, you know, in a special uh, scenario. Uh, I'm going to study uh, these certain invariant stability conditions. So, assume our triangulated category is is just a linear is linear of finite type over field. Which basically means that uh, the graded form from E to F or any two object is a finite dimensional vector space. So we uh, we assume our triangulated category satisfies three conditions. The first one says that uh, uh, we want that our triangulated category to be a fractional clavial of dimension less than two. Which means that if we compose the serif functor r times, then it's equal to shift by k, and the quotient k over r is smaller than two. So this is the first condition that we require. The second condition is that we want that the numerical groups in the group of our triangulated category, which I'm going to define it um, uh, afterwards. What I mean by numerical groups in the group, to be of rank two, <coughs> be a lattice of rank two. And, um, and the maximum of the Euler pairing of each class with itself in this numerical group in the group uh, to, be, uh, to be less than zero. And I'm going to denote by LT, the maximum um, value that the Euler pairing of any class with itself could have. And we, uh, we, uh, we assume that there is an object Q in our triangulated category, which satisfies this minimal uh, condition, which means uh, which says that the dimension of X1 from Q to Q is bigger than minus LT plus one and uh, smaller than minus two LT plus two. You will see in a minute why I am putting this uh, <coughs> upper bound on, on the dimension of x1 of q and q. Okay. Uh, the first result is that so if we assume that our triangulated category satisfies these three conditions, then um, all ser invariant numerical stability conditions uh, lie in the same orbit with respect to the action of GL2. Okay. Here by numerical stability condition, just I mean that the stability function factors through the <coughs> numerical groups in the group of T. And uh, the, so the claim is that if you have to say in binary stability conditions sigma uh, one and sigma two, then there exists an element in the universal cover of GL two such that sigma one is equal to sigma two times um, J theta. So if there is no question, I'm going to briefly sketch how how we prove uh, this theorem with LAR. Could I maybe ask a question? Um, can you uh, explain this third condition in your, I mean, your assumption on T? Um, you mean this one? So um, 
So do, do you want to see why I'm putting such kind of condition? Yes, I mean, is there um, some specific example you have in mind? Or? Uh, yes, you will see an example and you will see why I'm putting this condition in a minute. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so uh, so you know you know in most uh, you know in all the examples that we are going to study, this condition will be automatically satisfied because uh, yeah we always have such a kind of object uh, with with this minimal home. So with in this minimal home, it just basically means that the uh, this just the smallest modular space of a stable objects that we can have on our triangle category. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you will see that uh, <coughs> after these two condition one and two, then uh, um, we do not have an X group of dimension bigger than uh, three. That's why we have home, uh, home zero, home one, and home two. Um, so, and in uh, in the most of the cases, home two vanishes, so we have no obstruction. And so home one gives us precisely the dimension of the, our modular spaces. But you will see an example, and you will see why I'm putting this condition. <coughs> so um, let's study uh, first some properties of um, stair invariant stability conditions um, on a triangulated category. Uh, which satisfies these three conditions. So the first one is that if you start with a sigma semi-stable object of phase uh, phi of E, <coughs> then um, phase of S of E is, uh, is smaller than phase of E plus two. And uh, this is because we have a kind of fractional clavia of dimension less than two. That's why you can easily see that phase of S of E uh, must be always smaller than phase of E plus two. And as a result of that, we can apply a kind of uh, Mokai lemma, uh, which, which, uh, which Mokai proved it for K3 surfaces. But uh, we wrote it as a weak Mokai lemma because we need uh, to put some uh, more conditions than uh, what Mokai did for K3 surfaces. So uh, we start with an exact triangle in our triangulated category, A goes to E goes to B such that home from A to B, there is no home from A to B, and the sigma semi-stable factors of A ha uh, all have faces bigger or uh, small to the face of sigma semi-stable factors of B, okay? Um, then um, we have the dimension of uh, X1 of A and A plus dimension of X1 of B and B <coughs> is less than or equal to the uh, dimension of X1 of E and E. It's, um, this weak Mokai lemma is basically the, the key uh, elements in, in the proof of our uniqueness of serial invariant stability conditions because it just gives us the control to, uh, it, it just gives us a control uh, on the destabilizing factors of any object. Okay, so the first application is that any non-zero object in, uh, in our triangulated category have at least minus LT plus one uh, dimension for the dimension of X1 uh, from E to E. And the proof is, um, is just using this weak Mukadama. First, assume that our object is, uh, is semi-stable, okay? Then we know that uh, uh, home from E uh, home of E to E shifted by two is equal to zero. <coughs> because phase of S of E is smaller than phase of E plus two and we can apply serial duality, okay? And we know that the Euler pairing of any object with itself is, um, uh, is uh, the maximum one was LT. That's why, and we know home zero from E to E is at least one. Uh, so we obtain this lower path. <coughs> But if E is um, unstable, then we can look at just the hardened Arisma filtration of E with respect to our this stability condition sigma and, um, and apply weak Mukai lemma. Because for each of these factor, we know, uh, as I said, that the, uh, this lower bound for home one of A and A and home one of B and B, so it gives a lower bound for uh, all unstable factors. 
So that's, uh, that's the bound that we can have for any object and also for any sigma stable uh, object, we can say that the face of S of E is bigger than face of E plus one, which is just obtained from part C. Uh, because um, we, 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 we assume that LT is uh, smaller than zero. That's why if I look at any semi-stable object, we have a map from E to E shifted by one, and so if we apply a serdrality, uh, we can see that we have a map from E shifted by one to S of E, which gives us immediately uh, this inequality. <coughs> so we have a very good control on the on face of uh, S of E for any semi-stable objects by part one and part four, okay? Um, and finally, that's the point that you will see why I put the condition on uh, on home one of E and E in 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 my assumption. <coughs> it says that um, if I uh, if I have an object in T which satisfy uh, this bounds on uh, uh, the dimension of x one of E and E, then it's automatically sigma stable. <coughs> So um, to prove this claim, um, we again apply weak Mukai lemma. So assume, first of all, it is unstable. Okay, if it's unstable, this then has at least two factors um, uh, which destabilize it. Okay, and then we can apply this weak Mukai lemma. <coughs> But we know uh, for each of these factors, home one of A and A and home one of B and B is bigger than minus LT plus one. So it gives that home one of E and E must be bigger than or equal to minus two LT plus two, which is not possible by our assumption. <coughs> so it is um, semi-stable. But if it's a strictly semi-stable, then we can apply again the same strategy for its Jordan the factors because then um, we can again just apply the same uh, weak Mokai lemma and reach a contradiction. That's why all this object in our triangulated category, which satisfy this minimality condition on the dimension of X1 of E and E are sigma state. Okay, so now I'm going to explain why, how we can apply this proposition 2.2 to prove our theory. <coughs> so I start with, uh, uh, fixing an object Q, which satisfy our minimality condition. By our assumption, we know always such an object exists. And as I explained, this object is always sigma stable with respect to any ser invariant sub-attention. Okay, so uh, let uh, sigma R, uh, I, C, I, and I for I equal to one and two be two ser invariant sub condition on our triangular category. Okay, and then by two properties, uh, two properties, one of four that I've just explained, we can control phase of S of Q shifted by minus two. So it's uh, always between phase of Q and phase of Q minus one. Okay, because as I said, the object Q must be uh, sigma step. Okay, so up to GL2 action, I can assume that uh, zi of q is equal to minus one and zi of s of q shifted by minus two is equal to i. So, and if you remember, and uh, I was assuming that the numerical groups in the group is of rank two. And so it, it can be generated, it's generated by, by the class of q and the class of s of q. And I'm fixing the image of the stability and the, uh, the image of uh, q and s of q under the stability function sigma i. So, uh, so by fixing these two, uh, I'm actually fixing the, the central shot, this stability function ci. So uh, z1 and z2 are basically the same stability function. Okay, and we only need to understand what, uh, what is this hard ai. So to prove that the hard ai are basically the same, we, ap uh, we apply induction on, on the dimension of x1 of e and e. And we show that if E is sigma one semi-stable and lies in a heart with respect to sigma one, then uh, it is also sigma two semi-stable 
and has also the same phase as uh, sigma uh, uh, one. Okay, so um, the base of the induction is where home one of E and E is minimal. So we know that when uh, home one of E and E is minimal, then uh, all these objects are uh, stable with respect to any set invariant stability conditions. So, uh, so the first part is trivial. E is sigma two semi-stable. But to understand the phase, we can look at the pairing of E with Q and S of Q and show that if the phases are not the same with respect, uh, are not the same with respect to this stability condition, sigma one and sigma two, we can easily reach a contradiction. Okay, so that's for the base when uh, when we are in these minimal conditions, and uh, for the induction step, we can just apply a weak Mokai lemma and look at the destabilizing factors uh, to prove the induction uh, uh, the induction step. Okay, so that's just the, uh, the the part to just convince you that why I need. Uh, to put the assumption that there is such an object Q with minimal home one. Okay, so for this, uh, your second question, that was to say that uh, an example of the tranquility category that satisfies this condition, we look at the closest of component of the Q with table. So let X be just a smooth Q with table and H be the hyperplane section. I'm always going to denote by DX, the bounded drive category of coherent shapes on X. We know that cubic threefold is a final threefold of index two um, and degree three. So, so it's not hard to see that the pair OX and OXH is an exceptional pair which basically means that there is no home from OX to OX shifted by P when P is not equal to zero. And uh, when P is equal to zero, this dimension of uh, there is just a trivial homomorphism between them. And also there is no homomorphism from OXH to OX in any degree, okay? This gives us a semi-orthogonal decomposition of our bounded drive category. Uh, where cosinus of component Q of X is just the non-trivial part of this uh, semi orthogonal decomposition, which is just consists of uh, all objects in the bounded drive category DX, such that there is no home from OXH and OX uh, to this object G in any degree. Okay, that's the definition of the cosinus of component for a cubic form. Now I'm going to explain that the cosinus of component is an example of the triangulated category the, which satisfies the three conditions that I uh, set uh, for our first theorem. First of all, we know that the cosinus of component uh, is a clavial category of dimension five over three. So it's smaller than two. And the numerical growth in the group which is the quotient of the groups in the group of uh, X by the classes, such that the Euler pairing uh, with all classes vanishes. Uh, so we know that the numerical groups in the group of our cousins of component is a lattice of rank two, and is generated by the class of the <coughs> ideal shift of a line and uh, S of I L. Okay, where S of Co, uh, co of x is, is just a ser, ser functor of the cosinus of component. And as I said, I L is the ideal shape of a line L in X. And also we know that the Euler cracker seek uh, with, uh, on this numerical growth in the group with respect to these bases I L and S of I L has this form. Okay, so you see that the Euler pairing of any two class is always less than or equal to minus one, as we wanted in condition two. And the lattice is of rank two. And also there is an object, which I uh, denoted by Q, and here is the ideal shift of a line, uh, such that the pairing of IL and IL, the Euler pairing of IL and IL is equal to minus one. So, so the dimension of home, um, uh, dimension of X1 of IL and IL is equal to two because it's just uh, coming the final variety of lines on a cubic triple. And, and so, um, so the object Q um, 
in our assumption, uh, tree is just the ideal shape of a line uh, in, in this example. So all uh, the three conditions that we wanted satisfies for uh, the cosines of component of a cubic tensor. That's why, as a result of the main theorem, we obtain that all certain invariant bridge like stability condition on the cosines of component of the cubic trifold uh, are in the same orbit with respect to the right action of the universal cover of GL2R. Okay. Um, so, up to now, there are uh, two ways to uh, construct a stability condition on the cosines of component. The first one is due to Bernardo, Macri, Mehrato, and Stolari, which is using the bounded drive category of um, uh, coherent sheaves on P2, which are right B0 modules. Okay, I will explain at the end of my talk how, how is their construction. So, so the idea is that they, uh, they uh, actually find a uh, kind of, uh, uh, okay, I, 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 you know, they, they just understand the cosinus of component of a cubic trifold as cosinus of component of uh, this uh, uh, non commutative P2. And uh, so using a restriction of stability conditions on this non commutative P2, they construct stability condition under cosinus of component. Okay. And the second method that just came up in 2017 was due to by Lahus, Macri, and Slory. And they started by weak stability conditions on cubic trifolds. And after uh, some uh, tilting, they just restricted to the bounded uh, to the cosines of component and proved that we are obtaining a stability condition on the cosines of component. We know that both this construction gives us ser invariant stability condition on the cosines of component. That's why, as a uh, corollary of our main result, we can see that both these two constructions gives us basically the same stability condition on the cosines of component. In other words, they are all in the same orbit with respect to the right action of the uh, GL2R. Okay. Um, is there any questions so far? So if uh... oh, yeah, I have a question, actually. Um, hello. Uh, hello. Yeah. Um, what, what does this mean for the um, wall and chamber structure? If if all the stability conditions are uh, equivalent under the group, you still have uh, wall crossing. Uh, uh, no, no, no. There is no, no? wall. Uh, then, then it means just basically uh, there is no wall. They are all lies in the same chamber. I see. And, okay. And you will see. Uh, and you know, as as you said, it seems uh, that okay. So then it means that there is no application. So there is nothing to work on it because there is no wall. But you will see that there are very nice application of this fact that there is no wall, and these two construction basically gives us the same stability condition. Okay, was this known already for these structures that they, they um, constructed that there was no wall and chamber structure for them? Uh, so uh, I didn't get your question, could you say again? Was this known for these um, these constructions already that there were no walls? No, uh, no, no, no. Actually, um, we didn't claim that there is no wall. We are just looking at the uh, ser invariant stability conditions, and still, it's an open uh, open question that uh, that is there any other stability condition on the cosines of component which are not ser invariants? So, if there are such kind of uh, stability condition which are not ser invariant, then they are in a different comp uh, component, and so then there could be some wall and chamber structure there. I see. I see. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So as I said, now I want to uh, explain two application of uh, this fact that there are uh, unique ser invariant stability conditions on our tranquility category. So the first one is um, studying moduli space of uh, uh, stable objects on the cosines of component of uh, class uh, uh, KP, where KP is just a projection of a Skype scraper shift to the cosines of component. So what I mean with that is that 
we start with a scribe scribe shift at a point. Okay, then um, we know that uh, uh, OP it does uh, is not in the cosine of components uh, because it has map from OX H and OX. So we need to uh, uh, first compute the left mutation of uh, structure shift by these two exceptional objects. Okay, so. The, uh, the left mutation of a structure shift uh, at a point by um, OXH is just ideal shift of the uh, ideal shift at the point P twisted by H. And uh, the left mutation by uh, structure sh uh, shift OX uh, is just the kernel of the evaluation map of IPH. We know that this I, uh, IPH has no uh, high cohomology and it has precisely four sections and it's not hard to show that it is generated by a global section. That's why the left mutation by OX, um, which is just the cone of this evaluation map, uh, is a uh, is just shift of a shift that I am going to denote it by KP, uh, and it's of uh, churn character three mi uh, three minus h minus one over two h square one over six h cube. Okay, so we pro uh, we project a scribe scraper shift at a point P to the cosine of component and object and obtain a shift which we denote it by KP. Okay, and. Uh, we know that the class of KP is just class of the ideal shift of line plus S of IL in this numerical grossity group. Okay. The first result that we obtain in, uh, the, in our group project is the following. So we start with a SER invariant stability condition on the cosine of component, and then we study the modular space of a stable object in this cosine of component of class KP. And the claim is that this moduli space is isomorphic to the moduli space of Giesecker uh, uh, semi stable or a slope stable shifts on X with this chain character, 3 minus H, uh, this chain character V, uh, it's chain character of KP. Okay, so it's not hard to show that this uh, shifts KP are all slope stable. Okay, but the problem is that these are not all uh, shifts uh, in um, uh, um, uh, in this moduli space M bar of B, because um, you can easily see that the uh, the object in this moduli space has no obstructions, so it's a smooth, and the uh, dimension of x one of them is equal to four. So we have a four dimensional moduli space, but this shifts KP just lies in a three dimension you know, for any point P in X, we have uh, the, the shift KP. So it's just a three dimensional uh, sub variety of it. So there are some other objects in this marginal space and bar of B. Mm -hmm. uh, so the next step is to understand what are the rest of the objects in this marginal space and bar of B. But before going to that, so the point of this theorem is that we can basically recover a moduli space of Giesecker stable shifts on X just by looking at a moduli space of stable objects in the cosines of component of the corresponding class. Okay, so that's, that's the, 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 the main point of this theory. Okay, now let's study this moduli space in bar of B. If we apply, so the idea now is to use weak stability conditions. So by weak stability condition, I mean that they are just kind of the same definition as bridge line stability conditions, but just the image of the stability function uh, lies in the upper half plane, negative real line, or zero. So we allow the uh, we allow the point zero to be in the image of the stability function, and that's the only difference that we have uh, with the uh, actual stability conditions. So it's quite easy you know, to construct weak stability conditions on trifolds. It's just the analog uh, definition for our surfaces. The same definition gives us weak stability conditions. And we can apply wall crossing uh, with respect to them to analyze um, this moduli space in bar of B. 
Okay, so maybe I shouldn't uh, mention that as, as you have seen here, uh, you see that chain one of these minus H, so it's primitive. Uh, th therefore, any slope semi-stable shape of class V is a slope stable and in particular, Giesecker stable. So all this notion of stability uh, coincides together for this class. Okay, that's why I'm not emphasizing on the notion of stuff, the notion of uh, uh, this class called stability that we consider. So the claim is that if uh, any shift E with chain character V is Giesecker semi-stable, if and only if it is, uh, if and only if E is of either of the form one or two. The first form is of the form KP, which I just mentioned. So for any point P on T with threefold, we can look at uh, the kernel of the evaluation map of IPH and denoted by KP. Also, it could be of the form ED. So for any veil divisor D on a hyperplane section Y in H, which is of class and which uh, draw up its ideal sheaf on Y is of class zero H, one where two H square minus one where six H cube. Then we can see that um, this um, torsion sheep has precisely three sections and it's generated by global section. And its kernel, which we denoted by ED, is also a Giesecker semi stable sheep of class B. Okay, so this is the second type of semi stable sheaves of class B that we have uh, in our moduli space and borrow B. Okay, so the first point is that we have H, uh, H0 bigger than zero. So if you look at this class, you can see that uh, there is always a smooth twisted cubic on Y of this class, okay? So you will see that why, uh, why I uh, emphasize this point that there exists always a smooth twisted cubic of this class, because in a minute I'm going to uh, look at the moduli of the twisted cubics on Y. Okay, this is the first point. The second point is that the sheaf KP is just reflexive sheaf. It's not a vector bundle, but the, the objects ED are all vector bundles. So I'm going to denote by M, M of V uh, the open locus of a stable vector bundles ED. Okay, so M bar of V minus M of V is just the points KP, which are just reflexive sheaves corresponding to the points P uh, on our threefold X. Okay. okay, so uh, now I'm going to first recall you the intermediate Jacobian of X and then see what's the relation to the moduli space that I just described. Um, Clans and Graves uh, shows that if you look at the uh, complex torus um, of dual of H21 over H3 XD, we obtain a principally polarized abelian variety with the polarization theta, and uh, which is just the intermediate Jacobian of X. Okay, so if you have a family of one cycles over variety B and fix a point B0 in, in our family, then ZB minus ZB0 is homologically trivial. So it can be written as the boundary of a three chain. And the integration on this tree chain is an element in dual of H21. So it's a, uh, the corresponding point gives, a, a po uh, gives an element in the intermediate Jacobian and defines um, the Abel Jacobi map from our family D to the intermediate Jacobian. Okay. As an example, we can look at uh, the open locus of a smooth twisted cubics in the Hilbert scheme of X. And I'm going to denote by T bar is closure in the Hilbert scheme. Okay, we will prove that the Abel Jacobi map phi from T bar to intermediate Jacobian of X with base point H2 is algebraic. And its image is a theta divisor. And the generic fiber of this Abel Jacobi map is isomorphic to P2. Okay. <coughs> so we can have a, we can now consider uh, the Abel Jacobi morphism from our moduli space M bar of V to the intermediate Jacobian 
which uh, says any uh, any Gisikar semi stable shape of class V, uh, class uh, V to um, second term class of E uh, up to rational equivalence uh, minus H2, because we want to be homology qualitative. Okay. So, so th this is the Abel Jacobi map that we want to consider. And uh, we have the following diagram. We know that um, by, by the proposition that I've just mentioned, this open locus MV, <coughs> all objects in this open locus are of the form ED. So there is a surjective map from the open locus of a smooth twisted cubic uh, T to this marginalized space MV that sends a twisted cubic C to the vector bundle EC. Okay, so the Abel Jacobi map phi that we will consider factors through the map phi prime. Okay, so by B will result the image of the Abel Jacobi map psi from M bar of V to intermediate Jacobian is our theta divisor, T inside this intermediate Jacobian. Okay, but the point is that we know that phi restricted to T has full rank four on tangent space. And as I said, M of V is a smooth variety of dimension four. <coughs> That's why psi restricted to M of V um, is injective on tangent spaces. Okay, so it has a finite fibers. But we also know that by view we result that uh, phi has uh, generically connected fibers. That's why <coughs> psi also has generically connected fibers. And since we know theta is normal, we obtain by Zyreski main theorem that psi uh, restricted to mx of e is actually an open embedding. Okay. <coughs> But we know that the image of whole of psi cannot be uh, theta because uh, theta is singular at the point zero. That's why uh, the image of uh, psi restricted to mx of e is included in theta minus zero. But zero is the only point that we miss in the image of um, psi restricted to m of e because, uh, because by B we result, uh, we know that the image of M bar of D is whole of theta and the only point which are inside M bar of D and not inside M of V are the reflexive shifts KP, which we know that their image on the psi is zero, okay? <coughs> That's why the morphism psi induces an isomorphism of Mx of V with theta minus zero. So in particular, we prove that theta is smooth away from the single point zero, okay? And um, we know that the morphism I from uh, X to M bar of E, which maps uh, any point P on our variety to KP is uh, an embedding with um, normal bundle OX minus H, okay? That, and therefore, the, uh, the map psi contracts the irreducible divisor M bar of B minus M of B, which is isomorphic to X, and has ample conormal bundle uh, to a point. Okay, so, so by a usual deformation theory argument, we can actually show that <coughs> M bar of B is actually blow up of theta at its single point. Here. Okay. So, as a result, we obtain uh, that the cubic tree for X is the <coughs> union of all rational curves on M bar of B and the unique divisor, which is contracted by any morphism to a complex Aubergian variety. Why? Because uh, if you look at union of all rational curves on M, uh, M of E, then it contains X because X is unirolled. But if there is any other rational curve, which is uh, contained in M of e, M bar of E, but it's not contained in X, then, it, uh, then the Abel Jacobi map psi gives a non constant map from this rational curve to the Abelian variety theta, which is a contradiction. 
That's why X is the union of all rational curves and it can be, it should be contracted by any morphism to a complex abelian variety. That's why <coughs> we obtain both categorical and geometrical trolley theorem, which says that um, two cubic threefold to a smooth cubic threefold X1 and X2 are isomorphic if and only if their intermediate Jacobian are isomorphic as principally polarized abelian varieties, and if and only if their coordinates of component are equivalent as uh, triangulated categories, okay? <coughs> to go from two to one, uh, we can start with the intermediate Jacobian of cubic trifold, and then we know that its theta divisor has a unique singular point. And with, uh, by considering the blow up of theta at its singular point, we are recovering the marginalized space M bar of B. And X is just the uh, exceptional divisor of this blow up. And that's the way that we can recover X. <coughs> and to go from three to one, we are actually using uh, the fact that there are unique ser invariant stability condition on our triangulated categories. Because we can start with the cosinus of component of cubic threefold and just pick a ser invariant stability condition. So, uh, as we proved, it doesn't really matter what, what is the ser invariant stability condition that we choose because they are all the same up to the attraction. <coughs> and um, and then we can look at the moduli space of the stable object with respect to this ser invariant stability condition of class IL plus S of I. Okay, and we have seen that this, uh, this moduli space of a stable object in the cosmos of component is isomorphic to the moduli space M bar of E. And as soon as we recover this moduli space, we are actually can recover our cubic 3 4 x <coughs> And that's the way that we can uh, directly prove a uh, cosinus of component without using uh, the geometrical uh, uh, trolley theorem for a cubic Okay, so at the end, I'm going to talk about the second application of um, uniqueness of Sarah and Brian's stability conditions. <coughs> and this is a uh, starting off for each bundles on um, QVT. <coughs> so, the coherent shift of rank D on a cubic threefold is auric if it is, first of all, ACM, which means that it has uh, no, inter um, no intermediate cohomology, which means that HI of X, uh, E twisted by GH, is zero for I equals one and two and any J. Uh, and the second condition is that the graded module uh, of the sections of E twisted by MH has uh, <coughs> three D generators in degree one, where D is rank of our shapes. Okay, so uh, it's proved by Casanovas and Hartson that any orig shift is actually Giesecker semi stable shifts of chain character D times chain character of the ideal shift of a line. And Lahu's Macri and Solari proved that actually that the marginalized space of a stable or rich bundles of rank D bigger than two on X is non empty and a smooth of dimension d squared plus one. So the only question that uh, remained open after their work is to, to just show that is this marginalized space irreducible or it can have different irreducible components. So in the paper with Laura, we, we, uh, we applied our, our result on uniqueness of sharing variant stability conditions to prove that this marginalized space of all rig bundles of rank D bigger than two on X is actually irreducible. So let me briefly explain how we use this uniqueness to prove irreducibility of this marginalized space. So again, with, by applying what causing with respect to weak stability conditions on, on cubic threefold, we can actually show that uh, any auric bundle 
uh, is sigma stable in the cosines of component? First of all, by definition, any auric bundle lies in the cosines of component, and we can actually show that it is uh, stable with respect to any, it is semi-stable with respect to any cell invariant stability condition uh, on cosines of component. That's why we obtain an embedding of the moduli space of auric bundle into moduli space of a stable object in the cosines of component of class D times I. And it is open because the both properties of being a sheath and being auric are open. That's why we obtain such an open embedding into this moduli space. Okay. Um, now is the point that I'm going to understand cosinus of component in a, a cosinus of component of a cubic trifold in a slightly different way. So fix the line L0 in X and um, consider the linear projection to a disjoint P2 in the P4 containing X. So, um, in, you know, we, uh, we, we, we consider the blow up of P4 along this line L0 and project it, uh, project it along L0 to plane P2. And its restriction to the blow up of X along L0 gives us a conic vibration that I'm going to denote by pi. Then uh, the shift of even and odd parts of the Clifford algebra corresponding to this conic vibration. Uh, it's just B0 and B1, and in this case can be explicitly given as direct sum of OP2 and OP2 to by minus H and OP2 minus 2H to copies of it, where H is just a class of a line on, on P2. Okay, so um, in, in the, in the uh, work that I've just mentioned by Lahus, Macri, and Stellari, they, they've just shown that um, the, if you look at the abelian category of right coherent B0 modules, and the, the bounded drive category of this abelian category has a semi-orthogonal decomposition, uh, where the, its cosinus of component is equivalent to the, uh, the cosinus of component of our cubic trifold. So we have a fully faceful embedding live from the cosinus of component of X uh, into the this bounded drive category of non commutative P2. Okay, so uh, we can understand the cosinus of component of cubic trifold as the cosinus of component of this non commutative P2. And I'm going to denote it by Q of P2 B0. Okay, so we know that the um, the, there are uh, unique cell invariant stability conditions up to uh, GL2 action. That's why the modulized space of a stable object on this cosinus of component of class D of S of IL uh, is equal to modulized space of object in the cosinus of component of class D of IL because sigma is cell invariant. And it's equal to, uh, I'm using the equivalence of cosinus of X with cosinus of P2, B0. And um, in, in general situation, I have to replace sigma by uh, uh, the image of this sigma under this equivalence. <coughs> but I know the image of sigma under this equivalence is another cell invariant stability conditions. That's why I'm using the same notation for both of them. Okay, so this is the same model, and this is the moduli space of a stable object in the cosinus of component of P2B0 of the class 2D B0 minus D uh, B minus one. It's just the image of this class under the map sign. And uh, now uh, by applying while crossing in this bound drive category of non commutative uh, P2, we can actually show that the moduli space of a stable object in the cosinus of component of uh, P2 is isomorphic to the moduli space of Gieseker semi-stable sheaves on this non-commutative P2 of this class. And I'm going to denote it by MD. Okay. So the, uh, the final claim is that the moduli space MD is irreducible. And uh, the proof is just by the same strategy as Kaladin, Lin, and Struke. So uh, the key step is to prove that MD is connected. 
Okay, we know that M1 is isomorphic to the final surface of lines in X. So it is uh, this one still connected. And if we look at D bigger than one, then we know that the strictly semi-stable locus of MD is connected, uh, is uh, connected because it's just covered by the image of the natural maps uh, from MD1 times MD2 to MD. Uh, where d1 plus d2 is equal to d, uh, d. It is connected by induction because we know that each of these md1 and md2 are uh, connected, okay? And uh, so the, the locus of a strictly semi-stable objects in md is connected and by the same argument as collecting Lin and Suger, we can show non-existence of a kind of connected component which consists of purely uh, strictly stable objects, okay? And this proves the connected, uh, connectedness of MD for D bigger than one. And um, we know that the objects in MD has no obstruction, so it's, uh, uh, so it, by no, uh, usual argument, uh, deformation theory argument, we can show that it's normal. That's why normal path connectedness gives us irreducibility. Okay. Now let's see what's happening. We know that the, this marginalized space MD, which is marginalized Gieseker semi stable sheaves on this non commutative P2, is irreducible. And we got these two isomorphism. MD is isomorphic to the marginalized space of a stable object in our, in our original cousins of component. That's why if we come back to here, MD is isomorphic to the marginalized space of a stable object in the cousins of component of class D times IL. Okay, that's why this marginalized space is irreducible. And we have an open embedding of the moduli of auric bundles of rank D into this irreducible uh, variety. And so it is uh, irreducible. Okay. And that's, I think that's all that I want to say. Thank you so much. Great. Thanks a lot for this nice talk. Um, are there any questions? So your construction at the end there seems to indicate that you not only know that the moduli space is irreducible, but you get some sort of geometric properties of the moduli space by this. Um, I mean, may, may, I mean, maybe I can ask if they are uni ruled these uh, moduli spaces, or do you know anything? Or... Well, okay, so it just goes to understanding this moduli space of um, uh, stable objects MD here. Mm -hmm. So you have these uh, natural maps at the bottom, the um, phi D1 and D2. I mean, you, you could imagine that you could uh, show or you get something more from this, more than irreducible. Um. So here you go. I think. Oh, she disconnected. Okay. Oh, hey. <laughs> I think you're muted. Sorry, I think my computer, my internet is too bad today. So uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't talk about this question. So I'm, I'm not quite sure that how much we can gain out of um, out of this uh, open embedding. Uh, but that's a very good question. Uh, Are there uh, other questions? I have a question. Sure. Yeah. Um, there are strong Bogomolo instability inequalities uh, for cubic three folds, right? How is this playing here? Uh, 
A strong Bogomolov inequality. By a strong Bogomolov inequality, do you mean the, the Bogomolov inequality? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. The slope, uh, semi stable coherent sheaves of positive rank, then you have a, the second churn okay. class is kind of bounded by H times the second churn class of E is bounded, right? E, oh, okay. So, yeah. So, e, is, uh, it, is it playing a part here? Uh, not really, you know why? Because uh, when we restrict them to the uh, to the Kuznetsov component, you know, to obtain a stability condition on the Kuznetsov component, all of them give the same stability condition up to GL two. So, uh -huh. so yeah, so it doesn't give us a kind of new stability condition on the Kuznetsov component. So we do not really need that strong version of Hilbert table here. So where does it not go through for? Let's say quartic threefold. Okay, so so um, uh, wait, I'm not, uh, wait, I'm not quite sure about the uh, what is the cosine component of this quartic threefold? Is it? Um, um, so. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we have um, wait, and so th there there is one important property that we know on the cubic three folds, and uh, this is that it is a fractional clavial. The cousin subcomponent is a fractional clavial of dimension less than two. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, I see. Yeah, which which is which is quite crucial in whole of the study. Uh -huh. So when you. Uh... I see. Okay, got it. Yeah. And this is not the case. Uh, this is not the case for uh, quartics. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I, wait, I'm not quite sure what's the surface for quartic. Is it the, um... Anyway, I can I can deal with this in the private email. It's okay. Thanks. Uh, I mean, I will email you. I, I double check. Or, uh, I double check it. What is the cosine of component? What's the step function? Email you. Thank you very much. Yeah. But, but maybe there are other funnels where you know uh, you could apply this uh, method. Um, maybe the Grishel Mukai. And... Yes. Yeah. So uh, actually, um, I didn't talk about. Uh, you know, I just mentioned the case of fractional copy of dimension less than two. The, the, the technique can be extended to dimension two. So, so it it um, covers lots of other example. For example, so when uh, <coughs> when we have uh, found tables of um, uh, uh, of dimension two and index two, um, so index two um, and degree two. And also for several cases in um, index one. So I mean, as as soon as the the share functor has dimension uh, less than or equal to two, then it can be applied because in all of these cases the the numerical gross unit group is of uh, is of rank two. Mm -hmm. So and this object Q that that you ask about it, so it always exists. In, in most of the cases, it's just the idea of just fine. I see. Great. Uh, any other questions? Well, doesn't seem to be the case. So in that case, so uh, let's thank um, Suhelia again for a very nice talk. Yeah. There is a question in the chat, actually, um, but let me uh, stop the recording. <laughs>